And that, that it plays very much like a Souls game, actually, just without lock on. It might have lock on now. The only one I've ever played and that I have up there is Monster Hunter Try or Three for the Wii U, hmm. which is a port of the the 3DS version. So this guy gave us our first death at the very end of the last run <laughs> with um actually an environmental kill because you know I I think I had control and I didn't realize I needed to run back real quick. And so we just kind of fell and died. And unfortunately, a recurring theme in this playthrough is probably at more than half our deaths are from just messing up environmental things. Yeah, it happened a lot. Yeah, which fortunately, they, I can only think of one of those instances in um, The Vengeance where it happens, and I can't think of any in Bayo 2. Like, they just got, they got away from that completely, and eventually like, hey, people come here for sick angel battles. So let's just give them that. Yeah, they don't come to Bayonetta for the platforming, so don't do it. <laughs> exactly. It gets uh, painful sometimes. Oh that God. one wall. Right, right at the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, oh, Bayo, you're so cool. That pose! <laughs> that just JoJo-esque pose is amazing. Like, again, if I ever do body modeling again, I'm gonna get JoJo and Bayo for yeah. inspiration. <laughs> Just do yoga to get practice. Yeah, up exactly. And just look at them because they're mostly yoga poses, or at oh, least yeah. some part of it reminds me of a yoga yeah. pose. Yeah, munch it down. Yeah, Gamora is just hungry. Jeez. And an elephant. <laughs> yeah, that scream was awesome. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, it's horrifying elephants. Just like that documentary we watched. <laughs> <laughs> oh Picture man, picturing some guy just out for a walk one day. No, oh, there's an elephant. <laughs> Oh no. For all the people on the CV, like, we have an elephant on Brown Street. Like, an what? elephant? Jones, are you drunk? No. Well, kinda. <laughs> but there is an elephant. I, I will hold this gate shut and save that the guy. town. That guy! I'm gonna. I'm a 120 pound Filipino gentleman. I'm gonna keep this gate shut against the 10 ton behemoth. <laughs> The, I'm gonna keep this gate shut against the animal that very likely inspired the biblical behemoth. <laughs> That's my plan. I'm gonna stand at the... We just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we tried to give uh, up. Oh, you can't just exchange the... Yeah. The, oh, yeah. We I never should, noticed we that. that, you just that. Exchange, yeah. Because <laughs> we... Okay, that's one of the times where we just hammered it. Yeah. Like, fuck it. Yeah, and the guy holding that gate shut, like I was explaining, he was holding it... He was at the... Not that... There was no point at that gate There's where no he would... There's no point. But, but that was the worst point. Yeah. Being in the middle of a double swinging, like, gate. Uh-huh. You know, because if you picture someone at the, the fulcrum, right? Yeah. And you're at the very end of the lever holding mm -hmm. it, and they're pushing at the near the base, yeah, it'd be difficult. The elephant would still tear it down. Yeah. But the elephant is coming at, you know, me getting the biggest mechanical <laughs> advantage against uh -huh. you, and is an elephant. <laughs> and you think you can stop it. <laughs> and all, like all the physics aside, if he was closer to the, the fulcrum and all that, mm -hmm. when the gate swings open, it's gonna slam into him, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But he's not gonna be directly in front of the elephant. The elephant's not gonna then take it out on him personally uh -huh. because he was in its way. Oh yeah, it's just gonna keep going. If he would have just uh, instead of <laughs> if he would have just ran, <laughs> you know, if he would have just went for it somewhere else instead of putting all of his effort into trying to hold a gate uh. shut against an elephant, a rather <laughs> large elephant at that. Yeah. All, Big ass African elephant. All those trainers too. They all commented on how uh, Tyke's size was, you know, even for an African, was uh -huh. pretty big. <laughs> big ass elephant. Oh man, I was really hoping that would be more of a, a horror story, though. It is a horror story yeah. from one perspective of how shitty those elephants get treated. Uh -huh. But I was just from the description of the yeah, the film, yeah. I was hoping it would just be like this elephant stalking people at night. Yeah, just yeah. Like, <laughs> I thought like it was going to be. They're walking down the street and like it's only lit by street lamps uh -huh. and you just see this big shadow in the background yeah. and then the camera yeah. approaches them from behind and they turn around. Yeah. They turn around, there's just nothing there. Yeah. They turn back and there's just this big wall of gray. Yeah. Trunk just picks someone yeah. up. I, there's oh, no! a, Trunk just wraps around someone's neck and lifts up uh -huh. and just like very easily rips the. Yeah, for some you, reason, you it doesn't lift. Tear... It doesn't lift the whole body. It just uh -huh. lifts the head off yeah, 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 of the yeah. body. You, you just hear tearing off the screen and then like yeah. the body slumps down. And the guy next to him's like, "Oh no!" <laughs> I don't. Sometimes I need to like check in with myself, and when I read the description of a show or a documentary like Tyke. <laughs> And I shouldn't immediately go to that scenario and think that's what it's going to be about, is there's a wild elephant 
<laughs> running around actually terrorizing a town over like, a long period of time. Like, like if I would have stopped and thought about it for a moment, I probably would have came to the conclusion, no, it was probably just on a rampage. Yeah, I, I mean, that, that's what I figured it would be. I was just really, really hoping. Because every once in a while you read something really stupid, or it sounds stupid, or you have a stupid scenario in your head, uh -huh. and then you see the thing, and it's the exact <laughs> stupid scenario you had in your head, and you go, yes! Uh, yes! <laughs> I had, so, this isn't exactly that, but it reminded me of it. So I was looking up a recipe for a tomatillo, or an avocado and tomatillo salsa. Mm -hmm. It's a really easy salsa to make. You just put some tomatillo and onion, cilantro, lime juice, uh, avocado, blend it up. It's that really pureed, sometimes even runny green salsa you see at Mexican places. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And um, so I was gonna look that up and I'm typing in my phone uh, avocado and I get to T-O-M and I accidentally hit enter. Or I thought it was gonna auto-complete tomatillo but yeah. it didn't. Avocado so Tom. So it starts searching avocado Tom <laughs> and I'm like oh no not avocado Tom and the first thing that pops up are all these images of Tom Selleck with, the <laughs> with his face replacing an avocado pit. So just a bunch of avocados with Tom Selleck's smiling face in there and I'm just like why internet? Like, why is this a thing? <laughs> oh Jean is so cool. Oh with man. The motorcycle. And so it's Avocado Tom. <laughs> Fucking Avocado Tom. I love that look that Bayo gave yeah. her too. Like, Who's this bitch? like she was also like, yeah, that was pretty cool though. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna give you credit for it, but that was pretty cool. That was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> As you use your motorcycle as a melee weapon. I might do that someday with, that, with a motorcycle myself. <laughs> like she never was much into motorcycles, but now she gets the appeal. Yeah. <laughs> now it makes sense. Oh man. Oh man, right in the head. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fancy bumping into you here. Just riding on the wall yeah. with that witch power. To find some answers about your past, <laughs> like uh, are we? uh reminds me of um the, the character from Freedom Planet who has a motorcycle. And using the same power. And when you, you climb on the ropes oh, and she's yeah. like holding on to like, her minute, legs. Wait, and has a, yeah, the yeah. Sonic the yeah, yeah. yeah the Genesis you, game. You the motorcycle and you have to climb the ropes with it uh -huh. and there's like the strain on her face uh -huh. like Oof. Yeah. <laughs> Did we ever finish that? Not quite. We got pretty far into it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure her legs are too long. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. High and dry for 20 years. Is she talking about sex or killing? I don't know. Probably both. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, she's probably thinking about both right now. Yeah. And she's probably like, hmm. <laughs> that doesn't make sense because, uh,. We don't have her actual outfit on. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. She has that medallion on her chest all the time. Mm. So she took it from her and she yeah. was like, Bitch, just quick. <laughs> Bitch, just real quick. It's so cool. Mm. I, I love the, um, the Jean doesn't give it up design. until the end. That, like, I'm on your side. Oh, yeah. She keeps it. She plays it super close. Oh yeah, you gotta keep up the whatever charade she has going on. I'm not even certain with her, I'm not even certain what her charade is. Something working with the angels to help Bayo to eventually kill God, I guess. <laughs> it's the that's a, a long that's a long con. If God's a dick. How am I gonna kill him? Yeah, this is gonna take a long con on my part. How long has she been planning this? At least 500 years. Yeah, exactly. Jeez, that's a long time to get a plan going. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you had a long con. I mean, <laughs> sometimes I barely take 10 minutes to plan yeah. things out. Like, the, I think the most work I put into planning things goes into this channel. <laughs> I don't plan much. <laughs> ah. She was just wearing the Link outfit yeah. even back then. <laughs> That's what inspired Miyamoto. <laughs> It's cool to actually pay attention to what's going on this time around. Oh, yeah. Charge. Charge. <laughs> Narf. <laughs> I hope someone watched that part of the Firewatch playthrough and got it. <laughs> oh, is that when we did that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's try and remember was that Bayo or Firewatch? Yeah, it's Firewatch. <laughs> 
It was right after we find Brian Goodwin. We're immediately making jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the tension broke, and then the game just turned into like a wet fart. <laughs> just <laughs> wet farts are at least surprising. They are, <laughs> and in some cases, fun. <laughs> Uh, they at least speed things up a bit. A wet Fire part is better than a fucking Firewatch. Fire I was gonna say, Firewatch, it's less fun than a wet fart. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's like when I texted you the other night about if anyone watches our, the last episode of this. Oh, yeah. We have like a, what I think is a pretty okay discussion about yeah. sexism and video games and stuff. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, we're not, we're not all bad. Yeah, <laughs> when you, you play, you watch Firewatch, and yeah. we, we're for uh, for five minutes, we're like, oh man, it's actually getting to us, and then you, it drops the ball, and we're just talking about wet farts <laughs> and the army of darkness, uh, <laughs> just making fun of things and supporting them at the same time, making fun of this game that everyone keeps blowing. Well, that's even Game Informer is blowing it. It's like when um. When I read a, a interview, or it was a, it was either one of the letters that Louis C.K. puts in his emails, or it was in an interview uh -huh. where he says, I think it was one of the letters. He says that he believes humor exists along all the other stuff. It's like you yeah. can't have an infallible, perfect video game mm -hmm. that's devoid of ridicule. Mm -hmm. You just can't have it. It exists alongside it. It helps make that game a stronger game by being able to make fun of it. Like and stuff. like I could build a list of my favorite games, and with each of them, I could build a small comedy skit. Yeah. Just talk yeah. about all the fucked up things in them. It's like you can't. And it, if the game was terrible, completely just terrible garbage we wouldn't have even bothered to laugh about it. Oh, no, you we know? would have just been seething the whole time. Mm -hmm. Just like, look at this shit, look at this, this is fucked up, fuck this. Yeah. So it's like, I, I, that's why I just don't get the, uh, all the, the defense, like the, just the super vehement defense I, for Firewatch. I, this is, I'm not even, this is purely subjective, obviously. I have no way of backing this up. I honestly, honestly believe that game is getting the praise that it's getting specifically because it's narrative driven. Yeah. And because people have been anticipating it for the past couple of years, and now that it's out, they don't want to admit to themselves that it's <laughs> not much of anything. Yeah. It's it's the phantom menace of video games almost. Yeah. Like in I a couple see that. Of, in, in a couple of years, uh, people might go back and be like, you know what, Firewatch is overrated. And we'll, we'll be have like, that aha. Discussion. <laughs> like Jim Sterling talks about this. It, He'll occasionally give a game a really low score, and then people will uh, rag on him about it. But then a couple years down the line, the general consensus is, yeah, people got kind of swept up in the hype uh -huh. at the time, and that game wasn't worth, probably wasn't you know, worthy of the eights and the nines it was getting. It is more of a six or a seven. Mm -hmm. So Firewatch, I think, will be... It's getting a lot of, like, 7.5s and stuff. I think Game Informer, the, the letter tip from the editor at the front... He basically just drops down his knees and just <laughs> a big slobbery job. But then the review for the game is like 7.25. Yeah. 7.5, something like that. You know, a solid, eh. See, and I even saw it around in the 8s, 8.3s, 8.2s. Yeah, I see a lot stuff. more of those, but I think the lowest I've seen is that, that 7.25. Mm -hmm. And on a, on a pure 10-point scale where 5 is middling, mm -hmm. I, I think I'd give it a 5. Yeah, it thing, functions, except for that time where it did not function. I think people, right at the end. Holy shit! I think people forget that um, a five isn't the worst thing ever. A five is it, it's right in the middle. You know, it's a it's a it's a game. Uh -huh. it's, just, it's a game. It didn't improve on anything, but it really didn't fail at anything either. Yeah. It just existed. And it, so it's like you hardly see the fives or less. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unless they're super duper bad, but. And it's like it either has to be like seven or ten. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, we well, we we uh, we consider games on a curve, basically, because so many games get between seven and ten that you kind of have to. It's like, well, if it was a good, effectively, the scale is seven to ten. People have been making that joke for over a decade now, but it, so when a game does get just a seven, it may as well be getting like a three. Yeah. And an 8 is the equivalent of about a 5 on a true 10-point scale at this yeah. point. It's weird. But it's, um... You know, I, that's, I really appreciate uh, Jim Sterling's 10... 
you know, his numerical oh, yeah, scale yeah. and how he explains it, uh -huh. you know, it yeah, just makes yeah, a lot each, of sense. Each number has a, a very specific meaning to it. Mm -hmm. It's not just arbitrary. On the on Giant Bomb, uh, Jeff Gerstmann, I think? The guy, the guy who used to work at GameSpot who got fired a while back. Yeah, I have no idea because I yeah. strictly watch the Beast Cat yeah, or um, listen to the Beast Cat. There, there, was a, there was a controversy in 2008 where GameSpot was running ads for Kane and Lynch Dog Days, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And just everywhere you went on the site, it was just like the sidebars had it, the yeah. banner ads, you could download a theme for your computer and all that. And then Jeff Gerstmann reviewed it and gave it like a 5 or a 6. And got or maybe fired, a four, right? and then yeah. got fired almost immediately. And like, oh no, it's not because of, of that. It's because of <clears throat> <laughs> what was that, sir? That is because of <clears throat> <laughs> and uh, well, and then he went on to found Giant Bomb with some other guys who were still there. That's but, awesome story, yeah, it is. though. But uh, a few weeks ago on the Bombcast, he he was talking about when he worked at Gamespot and how they uh, reviewed games. He basically they had a spreadsheet. And they gave a specific score to different elements of the game, you know, graphics, sound, gameplay, etc. But those were weighted in such a way that it was, mm. unless the game was terrible, it was almost impossible to give the game lower than an 8. That's like, shitty. He, he was talking about how he reviewed uh, Twilight Princess and gave it, he wanted to give it basically a 6, maybe mm. a 7. But because of how their system worked, it ended up becoming 8.8. .8. Wow. Which is why, if you read Jim Sterling's review of it, the HD release, uh -huh. he, he makes that joke at the very end. So that's why he gives, it, that. he gives it an 8.8. .8. I'm like, why is that? And I go to the GameSpot thing. It's like, oh, okay. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. That's funny. I, I really want to play that, though. <laughs> I want to get oh, the yeah. HD review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited for what Nintendo has to offer coming out this year. Yeah. It seems like... Well, there's it, that, there's Star Fox, there's mm -hmm. the new Zelda, there's possibly the NX, which I'll get excited for that when I actually see it. Mm -hmm. I'm still interested in it. There's all the handheld stuff. Oh, so much handheld stuff. Yeah. The eShop and the actual... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, major releases. It's, it's, it's weird to look forward to be able to play SNES games on a new 3DS, but I... I love that system. That's... Yeah. Most... A lot of my favorite games oh, yeah. are on the... Like, if I had to choose between a Genesis and an SNES, I would get an SNES. Oh, I only yeah, got that well, emulator over there because it yeah. because it has, like, 40 built-in Genesis games. And All, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah Dinosaurs for Hire. It's like, you might as well just, yeah. If there was a similar Nintendo thing with 40 titles, I'd be all over it, too. But oh, yeah. that would never happen. No, because Nintendo just, would go, what are you doing? And that just suing you. shows you the the gap in the quality between Exactly, the two. I was thinking about that. Like, there's no way... I, I thought about exactly that. I'm like, there's no way something like this would ever exist for Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I finally... I'm going to play through Earthbound because mm -hmm. it's going to become available on 3DS. <laughs> and I I can't... For some reason, I just can't picture myself sitting down at a computer or the, on the couch yeah. at the TV to play that game. Yeah. Because I, um, I, I want to utilize those for... You know, games that need oh, yeah. power. Like, you know what I mean? It seems yeah, exactly. on my PC, I'm going to play Earthbound. Yeah. You know, so playing it on my 3DS, it's going to be great. It's mm -hmm. going to be perfect. I mean, I've had it on my Wii U for, God, since I got my Wii U. I bought it almost immediately. I, I just haven't played it. Because I'm like, well, I kind of didn't want to play it on this, uh -huh. but I would love to play it on my 3DS. Or when I get that exercise bike, like, oh, just, you know, sit there and play perfect. it. Yeah. That would be the way to play it. Yeah. Cheshire! <laughs> Evan, if you one of his few confident moments. Yeah, that was a really cool move right yeah. there. I'm jumping off that person's head or shoulder. <laughs> or head and shoulders. <laughs> Knees and toes. For, <laughs> for flake free scalps. <laughs> then he has to stop and get his horn on. I, I love that uh, he was able to tell that was a lady. Mm -hmm. Just from her. Oh. He was like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> and like, not only a lady, but a lady that he'd have wanted to actually stop and, uh -huh. and check out. And, Do you <laughs> like, you can just tell from the voice. Uh -huh. Which sometimes you can, it's weird. Sometimes you hear someone, and you're like, yeah, that person's a bit overweight. <laughs> it's those bees. Yeah. <laughs> I bought the bracelet to rip off Pat Nozzle well, poorly. <laughs> those fat bees. Yeah. Like, I've, in the past couple of days, I, I started doing voice exercises to, yeah. to warm up for this, so I can, you know, not stumble over my words and then listen to myself in the recording light and go, fuck! Don't you hate yourself when you're editing? I hate myself when I'm editing. God damn. 
I just listen to my voice. I'm like, why do I sound like that? So I, I, Hi, guys. So yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, so, I, so I've, uh, I, I've started warming up Sorry, mostly huh? by singing Mayonetta to myself over and over again. <laughs> I'm just like, Mayonetta, Mayonetta, in all kinds of different yeah. tones and whatnot. Just really work it out. Sometimes I just get flummy because I go, sometimes I go all day without talking. Oh, yeah, me And too. so then I finally open my voice, like, I may as well be a deep one. You know, I spend most of the day not talking. Yeah, exactly. So it's weird to come here and talk. I'm like, oh, wait, I, I, oh, words? Yeah, and then I spent most of my childhood not talking very much. So yeah. as an adult, it's like, oh, I don't have that practice. And you almost said it. You almost said Mayonetta. I love that uh, zip line thing he did when he uh -huh. came up. Like, I missed that when we were playing. And you, all you see is the highlight of the uh, cord that he zips mm -hmm. down on. Oh, yeah. He, like, zips it back into his belt. <laughs> Perfect. That's mm -hmm. great. He's a he is actually a pretty slick dude. He's just a yeah. goof. Well, he's just a well he's again. Just he's just a dude. he's just a dude in the middle of sick angel battles. It's like you can't really blame him. A name you better remember. <laughs> just trips, huh? uh, and like frankly, no matter how how slick of a dude you are, when there's a, a woman like Bayonetta just constantly around flirting with you and disappearing into the day. purgatory realm. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna lose your cool. You're gonna lose your composure. You know what I just noticed, too, is that this interaction that they have, Bayonetta's a lot meaner, uh -huh. but as the game goes on, it becomes a lot more playful. As yeah. she, gets, she actually starts to enjoy his goofy-ass fucking things up uh -huh. all the time. <laughs> and that's kind of cool. And then towards the end, like she actually kisses him, right? Yeah. I, I that's, think so. That's a... Uh, I never noticed. She actually, it, I don't know if it was intentional. <laughs> father. Yeah, that but, father. But she just, uh, you know, tripping him like that, and the, she's just kind of like, huh. Uh -huh. yeah, it wasn't playful at all. It was pretty, <laughs> pretty yeah. cruel. So as an explanation to anyone who might be watching this is isn't sure what's going on, uh, he thinks Bayo killed his father because his father opened the casket that Bayo was trapped in for four or five hundred years. And as soon as she was floating in the air there, and then his dad got ripped apart, and then he yelled, Father! Oh, trumpet fucker. Trumpet fucker. Ooh. The same smell that clung to the air the day my father was murdered. God, I recognize his voice, and I'm pretty sure I looked this up it's while we were playing. It's Yuri Lowenthal. That's right, yeah. So is Yuri Lowenthal or the other one? The Nolan North. Nolan North. Yeah, <laughs> Nolan North. And there's a third one you hear a lot. But I forget his name, and I'm not gonna bother because I think he's getting phased out. And as made evident by the fact we can't remember his name. Yeah, but I think the one I'm thinking of was the voice of Spike in. Uh, uh, yeah. 